Hi, I'm Sterling Edwards. Thank you for joining me. Let's paint a sunset, and let's see if we can't do one that's very vibrant and very clean. Uh, quite often, and I, I'm speaking primarily of my own experience, for years I tried painting sunsets with pretty blues and violets and oranges, and they always got kind of muddy and kind of grayed down. And I was very frustrated with it. And I started experimenting with color combinations, and I finally found a system that works. I'd like to share that to you right now. It's, it's a system I call using a buffer zone. Buffer zones are colors that are compatible with two or three other colors on your palette without getting muddy. It's, it's, kind of, it's almost like getting into the analogous thing a little bit, analogous colors, but you'll see me demonstrate buffer zones in this painting. And they're really quite interesting because they allow one color to just merge into the next, which merges into the next, and stay very clean in the process. So we're gonna do some of these. I'm gonna show you how to use the buffer zones. We're gonna paint a small landscape. We'll have a little tree line in the distance, but the, the sky is the main uh, focus of this demonstration. So let's take a look at some of the materials we're gonna use. Now the palette is a, a pretty standard palette. It's a, it's a, uh, I've got just a nice assortment of warm and cool colors, but since we're doing a sunset, of course, we're gonna be using primarily warm colors. And let's start with some Indian yellow. Let's mix a nice wash of that up. I'm also going to have some violet. Now, if you if you know the color wheel, there's there's instantaneous clash right here between these two colors. Violet and yellow, they're both complementary colors. If I put these in a sunset and they run together, they're going to turn into a very neutral gray and have the potential of getting muddy if I go back and try to add more to it. However, on the other, what I'm going to do to prevent that is put this color, which is primary red magenta. I'm putting this between those two, primary red magenta. It's a very clean, very transparent color. It's one of the prettiest colors on my palette, actually. And it's very compatible with this, and it's very compatible with this. So I can have the yellow along the horizon, which kind of goes up into the magenta. Then it goes up into the violet. And let's say, let's say I have one more color. Let's take some cyan blue. So we've got four colors in this sunset. Now again, if, you, if you've studied the color wheel, if I mix this and this, if I mix the Indian yellow and the magenta, I get an orange. Orange and blue turn into mud. Yellow and purple turn into mud. Blue and yellow make green, which mixes with red, becomes mud. There's a lot of potential for mud right here. But if you use a buffer zone, the way I'm going to show you, you can get a very clean, bright, luminous landscape with a sunset without getting mud. It's a very simple process. I wish I'd learned this 20 years ago, but maybe this will help you. It might save you a lot of headaches along the way. The other materials I'm using, I have two containers for water, one for uh, uh, clean water for adding water to my painting, and the other one's for rinsing brushes. And I have this. Now this is just a uh, toilet tissue. In fact, I'll flip it over. It's toilet tissue with paper towel wrapped around it. And it's a, it's a great tool for blotting my brushes and getting the excess water out. I use this uh, religiously. It's just a great thing to use. If I have a really wet shape on my paper, for example, and I take a brush that's dripping wet and, and go into that, I get a back run or a blossom. What I'll quite often do is take the brush and just tap it a few times to get the excess water out of the brush. That way I, I can minimize my risk of getting those annoying blossoms. Coming back over to the paper, I have a piece of Fabriano Artistico cold pressed watercolor paper, very, very smooth velvety surface. And it's taped down to a gator board, which is just a mounting board with one inch masking tape. Now the tools I'm using are just a variety of brushes. These are all brushes I designed, by the way. They're, uh, they're all nylon brushes. I have a couple of uh, these, which are very stiff, stiff bristle brushes. These are great for blending and smoothing edges. And then I have a two inch flat, a one inch flat, and a half inch flat nylon brushes. And these are just very, uh, very slim profile. They do a great job of keeping an edge and really laying in lots of color at the same time. So those are the brushes we'll be using for this demonstration. And I've got to make some decisions now. Let's, let's, uh, let's start by just putting a little horizon line down here at the bottom. This is where the ground is going to be. I want a really pretty sunset up here in the sky. And then I'll have just a little suggestion of trees along the horizon just to kind of help complete the scene as a, as a landscape. So the decisions I have to make now is yeah, I've already got the paint mixed. Do I start this on dry paper or on wet paper? Well, it's a sunset. I want these beautiful flowing colors. So my best bet is to start on wet paper. So let's take one of these bristle brushes. In this case, I'm using the inch and a half bristle brush. And let's just come in here and see if we can't uh, wet this paper from the horizon line up into the sky. 
want it pretty wet. Okay, I'm gonna really lay some color into this thing. And I think you'll see as I get into this just how effective this buffer zone really works. Now let's start with a two inch flat brush. This is the two inch flat nylon brush. Let's start right along the horizon by putting in some Indian yellow. That's a very, very bright, vivid yellow color. Coming right across that wet paper. And I'm kind of working it up into the sky a little bit. It's a graded wash. Typically with a graded wash, we go up in the top, working down until it kind of fades out. This time we're starting at the horizon, working up. And it gives me a nice glowing uh, yellow along the horizon. Let's put a little bit more on there, just make sure it's really strong so the camera can pick it up. And I'm working up, working up towards the center of the page. Now let's rinse that brush off. Now let's go into some of the primary red magenta. And I'm starting right here, about the middle. And I'm working this down a little bit into that Indian yellow. So it, picks up, it makes a nice, beautiful orange, but it's a very clean color. Now we're going to come above that, and we're going to put in the purple. The purple will mix with the magenta, keeps it away from the yellow. That's your buffer zone right there. Starting at the top, and putting in the purple, the violet. And I'm working that right into the magenta. So now we're getting some pretty sunset colors. Now I can go back if I want to and put more color into this. And let's take a one inch flat brush. Let's go back into the Indian yellow and put even more along the horizon. Let's make this a very vivid sunset. The sun's almost gone down behind the tree line, but Everything's very bright and glowing. And I'm working that again, working that right up into the magenta. Rinse the brush out. Get a little bit more magenta. Bring it right into the yellow. Makes that beautiful glowing orange. And as you work up, work it right up into the purple. Now we're going back into the purple again. I can do this all day long. As long as I keep that paper wet, I can keep adding more and more of these colors. But you eventually reach a point, you don't have to put too much. We're trying to uh, uh, more or less tell a story with these colors, and it's, it's going to work. We don't need to get too carried away with it. Now let's take some of the blue and put the blue up here at the very top. The blue will be separated from this orangish area by the violet. So if you can see what I'm doing, I'm really kind of stacking the colors, but I'm keeping the complementary colors, which turn muddy away from each other. It's a very effective way to paint. Here's the blue. So you get this nice gradation of sunset colors. Now I think along the horizon, what I'd like to do is put just a little suggestion of some trees. Let's take a little bit of orange, a little bit of violet. And let's just have a tree line along the bottom here. And the trees are almost as though they're lit up by the, by the sun, which has just gone down. I'm trying to vary the heights of the trees, vary the width of the trees, even leaving some open space in between them, where maybe there's no trees. Just little suggestions, that's all they are, just little suggestions that people will look at and they'll, they'll see a sunset with some trees. Now we're going to let that rest for a minute. Let's just let that little area right there sit on its own. I want to take some violet now. A little bit of the violet and blue, but I'm using very little water in my brush. This brush is almost dry and the paint's almost dry. Because remember, there's lots of water on this paper. Let's put a few clouds up here. These are a few of these wispy clouds that we see quite often in sunsets. And there really is no limit to what you can do with, it, with this, uh, this combination of colors, making the sunset look very bright and very vivid. It's just, uh, this is a very quick little demonstration, but it gives you some ideas, I think, on how you can, you can go in there and kind of manipulate the colors to uh, suggest a very bright sunset without getting too, 
too heavy on the pigment and without getting muddy. Now I'm taking a little bit more of the orange, a little bit more of the blue, a little bit more of the violet in a pretty thick state and I'm painting a few more of these little trees along the horizon. Let's make a few of them even closer. This is just fun painting. I, I think as artists we are so fortunate to have the ability to do this and not only the ability but have the time to do this. This is a wonderful way to spend a day is just there and just play with this and just uh, practice different things like this. So here's a few trees along the horizon that are a little bit closer than those distant trees. And just playing with the shapes. All we need now is put some grass up here in this foreground. Let's go back to that bristle brush, the half inch, or the one, in, one and a half inch. Here's some golden lake. I'm going to take that right to the bottom of those trees. And leave a little bit of white. A little bit of white paper is good. It kind of gives the landscape a little sparkle. And let's put some violet in it. And a little bit of brown, just to kind of give us a little bit more character using that bristle brush to make some pretty grassy shapes. And if you get a chance, be sure to look at the, uh, the free demonstration on how to paint grass. This little bristle brush makes the most incredible grassy shapes. And I'm just laying the brush and just pulling it up. But you can get these beautiful, uh, beautiful textures. And at what point do you stop? That's the key. Everybody says, when do you know when a painting is finished? How do you know when to stop? Well, quite frankly, my philosophy of that is when the, when the painting reads the way you want it to read and people interpret it the way you want them to interpret it, it's a finished painting. It really has no, little to do with the amount of detail you put in it or anything else. It's just the way you want the painting to be interpreted. This is a very simple little painting of an interesting sunset with a very golden horizon graduating into uh, grading into the violets and the oranges and then the violets and then the blues. It's a simple old technique with a few dark shapes in the foreground and some darker grass shapes up here. And before long you've got just a very, uh, very suggestive little landscape with lots of color in it. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's a fun technique. Try it a few times. Give yourself a learning curve. These things all take a few practice shots. We don't learn this overnight, but 90% of the fun of watercolors is learning how to do it. So if you have a chance, check my website, sterlingedwards.com. And while you're there, be sure and check my calendar page. I'm doing workshops all over the U.S. and Canada. I might be coming to a workshop near you, and I'd love to have a chance to meet you. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.